So um, we see parabolic, parabolic partial differential equations in a lot of situations. Um, in most cases, you can just think of this as a time-dependent problem in one spatial dimension. So there's one spatial variable and then time, and we're trying to solve um, for some result as a function of both space and time. And it's this PDE, PE command that lets us do this. So here's the model problem I chose. It's a heat transfer problem. So we've got some slab here, this blue thing, and it's heated on one side uh, by a surface heat. Think of this as a lamp sitting over here heating the surface. And then the back is held at a temperature of zero. So we hold the back at zero Celsius uh, and we heat the front with some surface heat. This will start at zero Celsius and then gradually heat up until it reaches some steady state. So the differential equation, the partial differential equation we're solving is this. Rho Cp partial temperature partial x equals K partial squared temperature partial x squared. K is the thermal conductivity of this slab. Rho is its density. Cp is the specific heat. So we need initial conditions to solve that. That's this. The initial temperature for all x is set to zero. You could change that to any arbitrary initial distribution if you wanted it. Um, and then minus k dt dx at the left edge at x equals zero is a constant q double prime. So that's this surface heating. And then the temperature at x equals l for all time is held at zero. So two boundary conditions, one initial condition, one partial differential equation. Put that all together, we get temperature as a function of space and time. So this right here is the general PDE that this PDEPE -E command solves. Okay, so it's some function C, which depends on x, t, u is essentially our temperature in this case, and the gradient of our solution or the temperature gradient. Um, that function times the time derivative of u is x to the minus m times d dx of x to the m of some function f which depends on x t u and du dx and then we add in some source that depends on x t u and du dx all right first of all this m thing m is zero for cartesian coordinates one for, for cylindrical and two for spherical uh, for us, we're going to do everything in Cartesian coordinates, so m is 0, and these terms just go away. Okay, but now what we need to do is give MATLAB this function c, uh, the function f, and the function s. And um, also initial conditions and then boundary conditions. So the general boundary condition is that some function p of x and t and u plus some function q of x and t times our f, the same f as we have up here, has to be zero. So that's a general boundary condition. We have one on either edge, one on either boundary. And then a general initial condition, that is we specify u for all values of x. And then, um, and then our partial differential equation. So we just have to give all these functions to MATLAB, and it'll do all the finite differencing and all that itself and just solve it. So for our model problem, here's our differential equation. Rho Cp dt dt is k d squared t dx squared. So C here, the dt dt is our du dt. So C comes from this term, and so C is, in this case, a constant, rho Cp. So our, the little c from here is rho Cp. Okay? If either of these variables were a function of x, you could just put those in to C, and, and it would solve it appropriately. Okay? Then f here, uh, I chose to make f be k dt dx, right? So if f is k dt dx, then one more partial derivative of that would return this. So f is k dt dx, and then our equation has no source term, which is there's no term independent of du dx and du dt. So, um, I mean, there's no term independent of the second derivative of t with respect to x and du dt. So s is 0. So for us, to define the, the differential equation, we have a constant C, uh, f is k dt dx, and s is 0. Okay, so here's how this works. So we have to send this function, or define this function, um, pde x1 pde. Uh, it depends on x t u and du dx. 
okay so c i just define as rho c p f as k times du dx see du dx is sent here so we can just use it directly and then s is zero okay and all i had to do was get use a global function to get these rho c p and k inside here then our initial conditions p d e x um, one i c for initial conditions it's a function of x so u zero is just zero so this sets up um, all of the initial temperatures to be zero for all x and then boundary conditions okay so our first boundary condition is that at x equals zero we we need minus k dt dx is q double prime okay so this is the f term remember f is k dt dx so that goes over here and q double prime is a constant that goes here okay so i rewrite this this way move the k dt dx to the other side so q double prime plus k dt dx at x equals zero is zero so at x equals zero we have p right the constant term is q double prime and q is the the coefficient of the f term and this is f so the q is one so if i said q equal to one and p is q double prime then at x equals zero that'll give us our boundary condition at the other end we have t of l and t is zero okay so there's no dependence on du dx so q is zero and then i said t equal ur so when um so when p is equal to the temperature or in this case u at the right edge or ur so ur equals zero so that'll give us t equals zero if i wanted t to be 50 um I would just say p is ur minus 50. And then when ur equals 50, that would be 0 as prescribed by the boundary condition. So I can use that to set any temperature at the right. Use this to set a, bound, uh, a heat flux at the left, and we're in good shape. OK, so the way that looks is there's this function pdex1bc. The inputs are x at the left edge, u, or temperature at the left edge, x at the right, u at the right, and time. So you can use any of those in your boundary condition. Uh, and you want to define P at the left, Q at the left, P at the right, Q at the right. So P at the left is Q. Q at the left is 1. P at the right is UR. And Q at the right is 0. Okay, so those four things set up our heat flux on the left and our temperature on the right. Um, now we just have to call it. So we set the end time. So this is saying let's solve this PDE for... 10 seconds that is from t equals 0 to 10 m is 0 remember that's setting cartesian coordinates we set up a set of x's what i used is what i did was use this lin space command to tell to set up x to go from 0 to 200 uh, or excuse me from 0 to l with 200 mesh points and l is just set up to be the width of our slab and then I spet, set up time to be to go from zero to the end time, which is 10 seconds, using 50 time steps. So we're going to do 200 spatial steps, 50 time steps, and then we just call p e p e with m, the um, the function that describes the equation, the function, the initial conditions, the boundary conditions, and x and t, and it just solves it. That's all you have to do. Um, to do post processing, notice here. Um, I have this solution variable. Then I, um, in the code, I set up uh, the temperature to be the solution, um, the first, you know, variable. And then um, I say plot x, um, say temperature of n comma colon as a function of x. So that says go to the last time, give me all the x's and plot versus x. And you can also do a, a time plot. You can plot the temperatures for all x at, um, for all time at the first uh, x value, and plot that versus time. So this lower command is surface temperature versus time. This command is is temperature as a function of x at the at the last time solved. All right, and here just for completeness is all the code. Um, if you look on the last slide, I give a link where you can download this code and you don't have to type it all in. But you see um, here I set up some just constants. I set up the X and T spacing. I solve it and I do some plotting. And then here's the equation. 
function, the initial conditions function, the boundary condition function. And if you want to download the code, just go to this URL and you should be able to get it. Thanks.